Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, and greetings, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Guest. <laughs> I'm willing to bet that most of you like to eat salmon. And I'm going to guess that some of you like to fish for salmon. And I'm guessing also that a lot of you already know that many salmon species are endangered and are at risk of going extinct. But what you might not know is how complex the issue is. It's far more complex than a seven minute talk. So today I'm just gonna cover some of the highlights and talk about why salmon are so important and also some of the work that's being done to protect the salmon. So salmon are a foundation species. That means they're a species that plays a major role in creating and maintaining a habitat for other species. So if a salmon is born in a stream in Idaho and then it travels out to the ocean and lives one to seven years in the ocean, and then it goes back to that stream in Idaho, what it's doing is bringing all of those ocean nutrients back to that little stream. And a lot of other species rely on those nutrients like bears, birds, wolves, and then those animals that eat the dead or dying fish because they die after they spawn, they then poop out those nutrients. So even the trees benefit from that, the salmon. This is called nutrient cycling. I found this board game where you can start out as a little salmon fish egg in a stream. And then to win, you travel along the path out to the ocean, and then you make it back to your home stream. This game does a really good job of explaining so many of the hazards that these fish face from getting eaten by a duck when they're a little small fry to getting caught in a net out in the ocean. I think it's really interesting that the thing that makes salmon so valuable, the nutrient cycling, is also what forces it to face all of these different threats. So the decline of salmon in the Pacific Northwest has many negative effects. I mean, the fishing industry is kind of an obvious one. There's many jobs many businesses, many livelihoods, a lot of money involved. And if the salmon decline and disappear or disappear, that's a lot of people being hurt. There's also a lot of tremendous cultural and spiritual value to Native American tribes. There's also a, a legal component to this. There are Pacific Northwest treaties that stated that tribes could forever catch fish in their historic fishing grounds which would be meaningless if there's no fish in those fishing grounds. So the tribe's fishing rights have been upheld in court cases, including in a Supreme Court case, which found that Washington state needed to do more to protect the fish in order to honor the treaty. There are also Southern resident orcas, which are killer whales, which feed exclusively on fish and Chinook salmon, are the fish that they want to eat. <laughs> These whales are also critically endangered and facing extinction. At this point, there are less than 75 Southern resident orcas. And the primary reason is lack of food. A lot of the research that I've been doing, you'll see organizations that basically combine the two, save the salmon, save the orcas. The two are very much intertwined. Grizzly bears as well rely primarily on salmon to fatten up before they go to hibernate. There's tourism industries for people who want to view both orcas and grizzly bears, as well as sports fishing, recreational fishing for salmon. So as the salmon decline, those tourism dollars decline as well. And as mentioned before, as a foundational species and with nutrient cycling, the ecosystem in general is gonna suffer when there's fewer and fewer salmon. 
So now I'm going to switch to what is the what work is being done to try to save the salmon. And a lot of organizations or some organizations describe it as the four H's. Habitat, harvest, hatcheries, and hydropower. So habitat, salmon really need good, healthy streams for a lot of area. Most of all the streams in Idaho, Washington, Oregon for the Pacific Northwest salmon. These streams need to have things like down trees in them so that the salmon have a place to hide from predators or to rest. They need side channels so that if there's a flood, they can get out of the way and not get washed downstream. A lot of work is being done to try to restore the habitat. Harvest, that's basically don't overfish. Set the catch limits based on what fish are available. And this requires really good science to know what that number is. Hatcheries, you might not know that basically eggs and baby salmon are mass produced in tanks and then trucked to streams or areas where they would like to supplement the salmon. And this seems like a really good idea, but in fact, it's had some problems. Um, one of them being that genetic diversity and resilience is lowered because of this type of breeding. And there's actually competition between the hatch, hatchery salmon and the wild salmon for food. And often the hatchery salmon went out, but then the hatchery salmon don't very rarely make it back to the mountain stream for nutrient cycling. So work is being done to improve how hatcheries are managed. And hydropower, there are a lot of dams in the Pacific Northwest. There's a lot of momentum and um, push to remove some of those dams. But at the same time, we're also trying to avoid fossil fuels. So it's kind of a, a tricky situation, but they can improve the dams, improve the ways that fish can get through the dams or around, or, yeah, around them. So lastly, what can you do to support the salmon? Well, remember the board game, there are many different threats all along the different parts of the salmon's journey, which means there are many places where work can be done to try to help them. Some things you can do, you can get involved with habitat conservation and restoration projects. You can do what you can to keep pollution out of the ocean, such as picking up dog waste and avoiding single use plastics. You can do what you can to conserve water. And you can support organizations that are fighting to protect the salmon. And you will find many of those by doing an online search. Just type in protect the Northwest salmon and you'll see at least a dozen. Thank you all for listening. And back to you, Madam Toastmaster.